Yeah. And let's take a quick moment. Um, in this graduating class, we had 152 graduates, and some of them couldn't be with us. So let's all wave at the camera and say thank you and hello to all our graduates online. Congratulations. Thank you for being with us, and thank you to family and friends that have come to join us. You please may be seated. Thank you so much. Now, at least you think Warrior Notes graduations are different than anything else. Dr. Kevin has a word tonight. And we want to make sure that he has time to deliver that. So with that being said, we are going to go right into giving out our degrees to all of our distinguished gra graduates. So if everyone would please, our first row and everybody, let's go ahead and get in place. Dr. Kevin, Miss Kathy, we're going to have you come on up front. And we are going to start off by giving out our degrees. And then we're going to get into the word of the Lord for the night. If I could tell you the countless hours, dedication, hard work, yeah. all the nights that you wish you could sleep a little bit longer, but you sacrifice that, all these wonderful men and women have done. Right now, Warrior Notes School of Ministry is right at 40,000 students all over the world. We are just beyond excited. One of the greatest things that we have learned from Dr. Kevin that more than a piece of paper, we need transformation. The world needs us to be on fire for Jesus. The world needs us to be equipped and to be sent. And that is what this school of ministry is here to do. And so with that being said, I think we're ready to get started. Receiving their doctorate in Bible and theology. Ryan Bruss. Woo! He couldn't be here tonight, so on his behalf, his daughter Ellie will be receiving his Thank diploma. <laughs> Jan Simmons. Sydney Poonosoa Valoran. <laughs> Michael Tate Kaupuni Valoran. <laughs> Leuma Fuala Lea Soa Valoran. <laughs> Receiving their Masters in Bible and Theology, Anita R. Anderson. Agar Charles Belizaire. Sheila Paulette Bellinghausen. <laughs> Lynn Bowen. <laughs> Daniel Manoha Charian. Alison Suzanne Chenard. <laughs> Rachel Ann Como. <laughs> Megan Marie Fultz. <laughs> Daniel Marion Hobbs. <laughs> B. 
Beth Lynn Jensen. Kristen Lee Autumn. Kimberly Pods Frazee. Marietta Irene Renfrau. Karen Irene Stewart. Rachel Jean McMahon Steinman. <laughs> Teresa Ward. <laughs> Terry Camp Willis. Celeste Hope Zopic. <laughs> Receiving their bachelors in Bible and Theology, Ian M. Adams. <laughs> Mark Allery. Jenny Marie Airy. <laughs> Kathleen Bayshaw. <laughs> Michelle Ballinger Bonin. <laughs> Marie Marjorie Bradley. <laughs> Sean Wilson Bradley. <laughs> Ciara K. Carlson. <laughs> Lynn Marie Carnicelli. <laughs> Teresa L. Charles. Brian Coleman. <laughs> Mia Cowan. <laughs> Candace Lee Demily. <laughs> Dwayne Kenneth Forst. <laughs> Joseph John Paul Ferenc. To Sega Mogos Gabritatios. Karen, 
Aaron Brewster George. Starlet Ann Hovius. Patricia Lynn Impson. <laughs> Stephanie Jackman Jaswinski. <laughs> Kelly Kane Morelli. Lori Rita Lee. <laughs> Christy Peter Lynn. <laughs> Tiffany Lorraine. Janet Ann McAndrews. Claire McNulty. Kim Six. Guyen Stephen Yen. <laughs> Sean Conrad Swenson. <laughs> Jaren Micah Tabor. Phyllis Jerry Wajeru. <laughs> Cynthia Waham. Jacqueline Nicole Zingali. <laughs> Receiving their associates in Bible and theology, Elizabeth Mary Applin. Sloan D. Armstrong. Virginia Marie Burrosen. Kristen Kazaza. Susan Irene Casterton <laughs> Tina Chandler <laughs> 
Tonya Denise Chase. Shanae C. Gallion. Heather E. Grinkovich. <laughs> Janet A. Hawkins. Mary M. Healy. <laughs> Naomi Gabrielle Corrales Haragi. Richard C. Leitner. Cindy Mayha. Teresa Kayla McLean. Nadine Lafon Moody. Kristen Paolo. <laughs> Sophia Pony. <laughs> Chelsea Elizabeth Ravita. <laughs> Catherine Ann Rutschman. <laughs> Alicia Ann Salisbury. Linda Sanford. Sarah Jane Sharp. Carol Ann Thatcher. Nancy Eliana Valeron. <laughs> Janet K. Weninga. If we could have all the grads stand, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> wow. We are so thankful for you guys. We're so thankful for what the Lord done, has done in every one of you. You know, the most beautiful thing is we have no boundaries to who is here today.
doesn't matter age, doesn't matter where you came from, doesn't matter what you've been through. God has done a powerful work in your life. Amen? Amen. All right, you may be seated. So at this time, we have the prestigious honor of having several very, very special guests. We have Dr. Karen from Primus University, and we have Dr. Wingate from Life Christian Univers University to join us today. Um, wonderful people that have helped us to frame this school. And our goal is to be the best and to represent Jesus with excellence beyond any world standards that we can find. And so we're so thankful that they could be with us tonight. And so at this time, I'd like to have Dr. Karen come. And we're going to have Dr. Karen share for a few moments with the grads. Thank you. Congratulations to every one of you. I'm so proud of you. And I, I totally understand the effort that you've gone through to get to this point. Most of you are like our graduates. They're, they're not children anymore. They've spent a whole life of learning. And now they really have the opportunity to find out what's got called you to do? What has he positioned you for? So watch for those miracles. Watch for the leading and believe that God's going to help you fulfill your potential. We know that he knew you before you were, hello, <laughs> hi, before you were knitted together in your mother's womb and he had a purpose for each and every life. And it wasn't just something, something useless or something that didn't matter. Every my life matters and every person that you touch matters. So just move out strong and watch for God to open doors with our graduates. I know even though our average graduates between 55 and 65. So we've got some pretty, pretty well versed people already, but God opens doors and they go into areas that they never would have even thought before. We had a graduate just a couple of years ago. She'd been a teacher for years and years. She finally got that doctorate degree. And now she has her own um, counseling clinic. She has 16 people working for her. She just had a philanthropist come and said, I want you to start a nonprofit. I'll pay for everything. So just watch for those miracles. That's the fun things. That's, that's what's coming at all of you. It really is. This, thank you. This isn't the end of anything. Probably a lot of you are going to go on to the next and the next degree. Go as far as you can, can go. Why not? God's leading you. As long as he's directing you and leading you, know that he's going to open doors for you and bless your life. And you are going to bless multitudes in the process. This is just the beginning of how he is going to take your life and make you a total winner and, a, and a make a difference in this world that will be forever recognize. So congratulations. So glad to see you all. And thank you for what you've done. Thank you for the hours and the time you've put into this. I'm really proud of all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Karen. Uh, Dr. Wingate, this is Dr. Wingate from the Life Christian University. Hallelujah, congratulations, all you graduates. It's just beginning. <laughs> the things that the Lord has for us is amazing. Uh, I just this year reached uh, 50 years of being a Christian and being delivered and filled with the Spirit, um, 31 years in higher education ministry, uh, or ministry higher education. And, you know, at some point in time, people think you're really supposed to know something. I found out the most important truths are sometimes the simplest truths. And I to draw that from some of the words of the Lord Jesus. These are just from the book of Mark. Chapter 5, remember when the, uh, uh, he, the Jesus arrives there in Capernaum after, you know, getting the demoniac delivered and and uh, so uh, Jairus, who was the ruler of the synagogue, came to meet him right away with the worst of situations. His daughter was about ready to die. And, uh, and so Jesus is going to him because he says, if you will come and pray, lay hands on my daughter, she will live and she'll, and she'll be healthy. She will live well. And so Jesus is on his way and all of a sudden he gets ambushed. With the woman, with the issue of blood. I know people teach it a little bit different, but I'm looking from Jairus's point. He's going, she got, she, all of a sudden, she just comes behind Jesus, grabs a hold of the hem of his garment, probably the first one who did that. She didn't want to touch his body. She didn't want anybody to notice. She wanted to just get her healing, get out of there, get legal again. 
draws from the power. Jesus says, who touched me? His disciples say, Lord, everybody touched you. And then the woman falls down and tells the whole story. No, no offense, ladies, but sometimes when a woman tells you the whole story, they might have been there for another hour. And Jairus is thinking, we're going to go get my daughter healed. And so he finally says, daughter, your faith has made you whole. And then they come from the Jairus' house and say, master, don't, don't bother the master any longer. Your daughter has already died. That's probably the worst moment in his life, probably the time for him to melt down. But Jesus immediately said, don't fear, only believe. Those four words, don't fear, only believe, are enough for you to build the rest of your life and ministry on. Don't fear, only believe. And of course, Jesus went with him and his daughter lived. And then I like tying it with another story. It's in Mark chapter 9. Jesus had been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He comes down and uh, some scribes are arguing with all of his disciples, the seven that are, the nine that are left there because he had three with him up on the Mount of Transfiguration. But the amazing thing was uh, this man came and he had a son who needed to be delivered from a mute spirit that gave him like convulsions and tried to kill him, throwing him in the fire and in the water. And, and he says to Jesus, he says, I asked your disciples if they could do anything and they couldn't. And he said to him, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. You know, Jesus, <laughs> he's thinking, oh, wait a minute, if I could do anything, I can do, I can do anything. <laughs> it's not about what I can do. It's about what you can believe. And he says, if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And just those words alone cause that man to suddenly believe. He says, Lord, I do believe but help my unbelief. He realized he didn't have that kind of level of belief yet. And so when he said that to Jesus, Jesus had that compassion. He went with him. If you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And so his son was certainly delivered. Now, what we do know is if you couple those two things together, fear not, only believe, because if you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. And that will build your life. That will build your ministry. And then four quick little things on one of Jesus' teachings. You know, being a Rhema grad, I have to kind of throw in a little kudos to Brother Hagen for Mark 11, 22 through 25 and 6. Uh, when Jesus, of course, had uh, cursed the fig tree and Peter points it out the next day, he so, said, Lord, the fig tree you cursed has withered at the very roots. And most translations say, Jesus immediately said, have faith in God. That's really not a good translation. What it says is, have God's faith. Because when you believe God's word, he pours his faith into your heart. By grace are you saved through faith. And that faith is not of your own, it's the gift of God. So every time you believe the word and the lights turn on, God pours his faith into your heart to work with. And the very first thing he says to do with that is, you got a problem in your life, cast it into the sea. By faith. And then pray and believe for the replacement to the mountain. By faith. And then make sure you're walking in forgiveness and love with everybody all the time. Guess what? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God is based on forgiveness. We wouldn't be in it without the forgiveness of the Lord. And so four quick little steps there in Mark 11, 22 through 25. I just think that's one of those things that we know God wants us to Stick to the fundamentals, the foundation, the things that make us the strongest, that transform your life, and know that God is going to be with you every single step of the way. And to quote Dr. Could <laughs> say die when he just says this, when you learn the word, you used to find out, guess what? It really is all rigged in your favor. Glory to God. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wingate. Well, we need one of our graduates for a moment, Pastor Simmons, Dr. Simmons. <laughs> Dr. Simmons has been such a massive blessing to this community, and Kevin and Kathy found him uh, growing in Texas and had to pluck him out of there <laughs> because we needed someone with a father's heart and compassion that has been in the trenches and knows how to win and knows how to help guide students to walk in their calling. 
And so with that, we have Pastor Simmons, who is now our alumni director for Warrior Notes School of Ministry. Amen. Thank you, Chad. Hallelujah. What an accomplishment. I'm just telling you. For me, this is a dream come true. I dreamed of this and gave up on it 20 years ago. And look what God will do. You know, Dr. Kevin says so many times, it's not the thing so much that you believe for, it's the things that God just does on your behalf and you didn't even believe for. It. Trust me, God can do that. I'm a testimony of what God can do in a moment, in a second, change your whole world. I love Warrior Notes. I love the Warrior family. For all of you that worked so hard tonight to be here, congratulations. For all you associates, welcome to Warrior Notes School of Ministry alumni. It's a big family, and we love each other very much. So welcome. I just want to say to you that uh, truly and honestly, the journey begins here. And you will begin to take this beautiful word right back to your communities. And you will share Jesus where we can't get to. You get that opportunity to shine the beautiful light of the gospel of Christ all over the world. I'm telling you, the word of God can permeate the most difficult situations and turn them completely around. One illustration that I can tell you of that. I grew up on the farm and the ranch. I was there for a, too long. And I will tell you this. One thing that I know, weeds can grow automatically. It takes work to keep the weeds out. But it's interesting. I, I, as a kid, I would watch a little seed sprout in the middle of a crack in concrete and pretty soon that weed would crack that concrete completely out. That concrete around it would crumble from a tiny little seed. And you're taking the seed of the word of God wherever you go. And you will see the impossible happen. Glory to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. <laughs> you can stay here. Um, at this time, if I can get all the staff to come up, Dr. Kevin, Dr. Kathy, we are going to commission these graduates, so we need to bring out our swords, and yes, they are real. So if all of our staff can please grab a sword and come on over, and we are going to have Dr. Kevin pray over all the grads. Grads, if you guys want to stand, whatever the receiving position is, go ahead and get in it. If you guys want to please fan out across the front for me, swords up, safely, we practice, we practice. <laughs> There's always a couple, you know. All right, you ready? Okay. By the power of the name of Jesus and by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, I commission you as ministers of the gospel and by the authority of God himself, the word of God, may the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ in his throne be upon you. May your words be anointed. May your feet be anointed. And all the days of your life will you see the Lord working with you, confirming his word with signs and wonders falling. In the name of Jesus, I speak over you. And every devil say amen. <laughs> amen. That's probably the first time. That's all right. <laughs> all right, graduates. I have a feeling you'd like to call this done and maybe flip your tassels, okay? Okay. 
So we're going to give Dr. Kevin just a moment. He's going to turn into preaching fire mode. So at least you think you should go anywhere. Put your seatbelt on. Drink the last bit of your coffee because we're going to keep going here, okay? But graduates, you can feel free to turn your tassel. Congratulations. Praise God. Whoa, don't fall. Wow, praise God. You guys may be seated. Now, here's what we told the students because, listen, graduation's great, receiving your certificate's great, but you always stay hungry. You always want to stay hungry. The key to not seeing anything diminish in your life is that you constantly pursue the passionate relationship with Jesus Christ. And let me just share this with you. As the dean, it's been an honor to get to know all you students all over the world. We've had students from Australia, Canada, all over. We've got some screaming online right now, I know, from everywhere from Japan, everywhere from uh, every, just pick a country. It just, it's mind-blowing. I can't even say them all. But it's so profound because what Kevin and Kathy's vision was that we begin with the children and we have a process where everything from homeschooling to worship to home Bible studies all the way to the doctorate. And so this right here is a testimony. You graduates are a testimony to what God has done in Kevin and Kathy and in this ministry. Because I can tell you this, you cannot just open a school and see this happen. This is profound in so many ways. And so we're so excited because we know that God is establishing the church in this generation. We have seen so many that have struggled. We've seen so many that have gone before us to carry the gospel on their shoulders. And so God is raising up a remnant in this hour, in this generation, that is going to take the call of God and they're going to see it through. We've seen many. We've seen many that have not made it through. This battle that we face is very real. The war that we face is re very real. But the gospel is more real than anything this world can present. And so I want to commission you guys with this. The glory of God is literally like the covenant, the Ark of the Covenant inside of you. And wherever you go, the glory is with you. There's no place that the brightness and the light of the gospel is not going to shine. Because when you're there, the gospel is there. When you're there, healing is there. When you're there, deliverance is there. So it's not about you doing all these things that you thought you had to do, right? It's just showing up and it's delivering the word of the Lord. And you being here no matter which degree you've earned, you are showing that you've given God your yes. You're showing this world that the gospel is real. You know, you know what you've been through. You know how your life has been transformed. Many of us, we don't deserve to be here. We deserve to be dead. We deserve to be in prison. But because of the blood, we are washed clean. And it doesn't end there. It begins there. And now you guys are going into authority, you're going into dominion, and you're going into overthrow. Amen? All right. So for everybody that's watching online and everybody that's here, one of the most profound testimonies I've heard is one of our sisters who's not here tonight. She's working on her master's degree, and she's going for her doctorate. She's 86 years old. And when she started... Her kids said, Grandma, what are you doing? <laughs> Grandma, what are you doing? Who is this Kevin guy? What are you saying? What's going on? But what happened was, is her life began to become transformed more and more and more. Then she got her associates. Then she just earned her bachelor's. Now she's working on her master's. 86, okay? I've got some others that are here that are just barely teenagers, We've got 18-year-olds, 17-year-olds, because it's not about what the world has labeled you with. It's about what Jesus has emplaced inside your identity that it's time to unlock. 
So all of our grads have been getting this, but for everybody here, for everybody online, I want you to realize there is so much more for you. The world will sell you short. The world will steal, kill, and destroy. But the love of God has come to give you life and life more abundantly. Amen? So with that being said, I want you to begin to discern your visitation. Don't wait for it. It's here in this room right now. Your future can be unfolded right now. The books of heaven can be unloaded right in front of you where you know everything you're supposed to do, you know where you're supposed to go, and you know your next steps. Do you know that by the Spirit, you don't have to guess. You can know. Because with the relationship with you have with your Father, everything can be made known to you. So don't feel like you have to just hope or that you have to wait or that you need an angel or that every time you're standing by the pool, somebody gets in ahead of you. Jesus is here right now. If you are his son and you are his daughter, then he doesn't want anything in between you and him. He wants to see you face to face. He wants you to know his glory. He wants you to be one that just doesn't carry it, but literally inhabits the presence of God. And so I'd encourage you, just like these graduates, go after God, number one. And number two, whatever he's telling you to do, go for it with all your heart. Don't back off. Don't back down. Okay? That's the world's message. The world's message is brokenness, barriers, and rejection. God's answer is acceptance, adoption, and son and daughtership. Amen? Amen. Dr. Kevin Zanak. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Everybody hear me? Okay, that's a miracle. All right. Here we go. All right. So, uh, so this, is, this has uh, been very special for me. This is a pivotal point, whether you re realize it or not. We, we started seven years ago. Uh, the ministry, uh, I retired from Southwest Airlines, and then I also um, started a school. It's just been over four years ago that we started the school. I think we're going on five, right? Uh, everybody's left for the airport, I guess. <laughs> I guess they're out. <laughs> their part's over, you know, they're out of here. Uh, anyway, um, there's, th the reason I say that is that God, God, whether you like it or not, God is into certain seasons and dates and numer numer numerology, you know, numbers. He's, he's into colors. He's into all this stuff. He's into music. He's, God uses everything, and it was corrupted by, by Satan. So there is a synchronization and there are things that are written down that must come to pass. And then there are those things that are conditional where if we don't inject ourselves into it, I mean, I mean literally force yourself into it, things don't get done. So it, it, it's delayed a lot of times. In the Bible, it is literally a journal of delays. And Jesus, yeah, and Jesus, you know, you see he's still diligent. God is still diligent with all the patriarchs. But think about grabbing one person and telling him to leave a place. And he says, I'll tell you when you get there, just go. And that's your father, Abraham. That's the father of faith. That's how this was all birthed. But the place where he was taken from was the area of Ur in the Chaldees. And if you check out all this, and it'll, you can, you'll, it's just a rabbit hole, but you'll, you can get a PhD D, you know, with two Ds, you know. <laughs> but the ancient world before the flood, if you really wanna know what was going on with the, the hybrid race and, and every, all the entities that we deal with today that we cannot see, except when an F-18 almost runs into him. But if you look at what was going on in, eight, in the ancient times, it was in Sumeria. It was the Sumerians. And a, lot, and a lot of things that were going on were, had to do with figuring out synchronization with God's calendar, using other ways to do it. Because it was a fallen world and these were fallen beings that did not have access anymore. 
So I wanna talk to you tonight about some things that, that God is into. And I'm gonna tell you some things that Satan is into because I feel like, the, yes, we, you, you, you won. You beat the devil, you, you got your degree, and there's more to come, okay? But what matters to me is when you leave this room and you go to your car and the devil's waiting for you, you have to have something that you've taken from this room that the devil understands is not defeatable. Now, he knows that Jesus is, is, is undefeatable. He, he, he knows that, that some of you are not defeatable. You're undefeatable because you've synchronized. In other words, you've adopted and you've been brought in and you've adopted the, the doctrine of God, really, the belief system of God, which doesn't have any wiggle room. I mean, there's no wiggle room with God at all. I, I know that you haven't been taught that, a lot of you. I, ha I was not. But God doesn't change. He's always been the same. So what he felt about you before you were born is what he feels like about you when you die. <laughs> it's the same. He, he doesn't change about what he had planned for you, what, how, he, how he looks at you and he sees you and he knows that you have all of this potential. But potential is really like putting money on a table and never touching it. It's worth nothing. Money in the bank is worth nothing. Money is not worth anything unless it's used. You gotta pick it up and you gotta do something with it. Its value is, is worth the, the, the paper and the cloth that, and the ink that's on it. It's not worth anything and unless someone else recognizes its value and, and exchanges it for goods and services. But this is not an economics class. But what about you? Well, I wanna talk about some things that God uh, wants you to know about. And that is he made decisions about you before you were born. And so how can you think that you can be good enough to, to receive something you already have? So if you're looking for a reward, then you gotta take the money off the table and do something with it. If you don't like money, I'll talk about a firearm. It's not worth a thing if it's sitting on the table. If somebody picks it up and knows how to use it, it's worth something. But I'm not afraid if someone has a gun if they don't know how to use it, especially if I see that the safety's on and that the clip isn't in. I mean, I'm fine, you know, like, take your best shot. <laughs> take two. See, see, that's how you have to look at the devil. He's already fired all his shots and he lost. He really did, okay. Now, now what God did was he, he, didn't, he didn't do this with you. He did this without you. He had this plan that he sent Jesus to do all this for us before you were born. And then afterwards, he made sure that we got the scripture and enough of it to understand what Jesus said and what was done in Christ by the Apostle Paul talked about that. And he gave this all to us, not that we would continue to live in sin, live in doubt, live in fear, to live below even the world. He gave it to us so that we could be restored back to the perfect plan of God, even though we still die. That was not fixed. Everything else was set in motion, the scriptures clearly teach all this, and he did this without consulting with you. Amen. <laughs> this message needs to be preached by you, but you need to receive it first. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the next couple sessions, and I'm gonna start tonight, because this is the word of the Lord, and you need to know this, the paper that you have your degree on doesn't represent what you went through to get that degree. How much it cost you, everything you had to do to be able to arrive here and get that diploma is, is really what it's worth. It's what it cost you in time. There, there are people that mocked you and I can feel it when you're standing beside me and my wife, is you, 
you were, this means more than just that paper. God proved your enemies wrong. You fought, you stood, but God had already ordained for you and wants even more for you. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about managing your trigger events. <laughs> because there has been programming done by the best. There's all kinds of programming going on. And if they, there are all kinds of forces working to program you a certain way from day one. So a lot of things you believe are not correct. Now you can wait until your last day here on earth to accept it or you can accept it tonight. But in order to go on, you have to, you have to accept the fact that you've been deceived. There are things that I believe that are not correct. There are, is correction and discipline that needs to, be, to come into my life. I mean, I only put 100, 110 hours in a week. I could do more. There's plenty more airplanes to fly. There's plenty more words to study in Hebrew and Greek and homebrew, you know. Hebrew, homebrew, and Greek, you know. There's plenty of translations to look at. There's all kinds of, of, of people that, that need your help, that need your word, that need you to sit there and let them talk. And have big ears and a little mouth. You need to be there for people. There's plenty of stuff you could do. Now, I'm not making you feel guilty. What I'm trying to show you is, is the, the days that I thought I was doing, I was, I was arriving was when I had a trigger event because I realized that my feet are where my head was a second ago. I'm on my back. And I'm, I, what I thought I could do, done a hundred times, I, I couldn't do it. I couldn't be consistent. I'm learning, I'm always learning, but am I ever obtaining? And when I don't obtain, I get frustrated because I work so hard and so do you. Okay, you, you have given. You have given until you went without. But there has to come a time where God puts his foot down and says it's payday, it's payback, it's all coming up, okay? There's gotta be a time where God steps in and says, you know what? We're gonna follow this profile that I wrote about you and you have done everything correct. I wanna know if you're done or not. That's what God did to me. He goes, are you done? Are you finished? And he gave me a vision. I've never shared this vision ever, but I'm sharing it with you tonight. This vision ever, but I'm sharing it with you tonight. He kept asking me, are you done yet? I go, no, I got it, I got it, I'm good. I'm managing it. I'm gonna get another job, you know, I'm gonna work it out. I can always work. I used to quote my dad to God, which is my dad said, if you want something done right, do it yourself. I got to the place where I could manage my inabilities. See, if somebody says, if you're, if you're not where you need to be and somebody says, you know, you, you haven't changed a bit, that to me is not always a compliment because you should always be improving and changing. And um, I, remember, I remember flight instructors telling me, you know, I go, oh man. They go, yeah, you'll never do that again. And I never did. Because it was so impressionable. When, when you realize that God was on with it, no, I got it, then something bad happens, but you don't die. You say, you know what, I'm never gonna do that again. And it, and it took that, it took that event to do that. There are people that are in those kind of situations now. And so I'm asking you, all of you, I'm commissioning you to go ahead and turn yourself in. And when the Lord asks you, are you done yet? You say, yes, please step in. 
The thing that is the hardest for us to do is ask for help. But it's the smartest thing to do, especially when you have people around you that love you and care for you and are actually smarter than you. And if you notice, almost everybody around me is smarter than me because that means I'm not gonna be the same. I'm going to improve because I'm putting people around me that are better than me. I'm not afraid of people being better than me. Okay, so this was the vision. I saw the Lord Jesus Christ baptize me. It wasn't a sprinkle, it was full immersion, you know. No sprinkles. And he, he, he held me under, and I'm like, ta- I'm tapping out, you know. I'm like, okay, I got, I got a good another minute and a half, and then I'm done, you know, like I'm. So I started struggling. I saw, I saw, I had this full vision. Never shared this before. Uh, and I was struggling under the water. And it looked like the River Jordan. And I've been there, so it looked really similar to that in the vision. And finally the Lord said to me, he said, when you stop struggling, I'll bring you back up. So I went limp right away. (laughs) And he pulled me back out of the water. And that's what you know as Kevin today. Is you don't know me before then. I was I was a professional at everything, and I knew everything. I've been to Rama, you know. I was a professional at everything. I knew everything. Now I know nothing. So that's why I improve. Okay, so what do you do when you realize that there's certain trigger events, there's certain things that happen that trigger you, and you get into a, a uncontrollable spin in your life. And the more you, you try to get out of it, it gets to where it's, you gotta bail out. You, 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 you're not doing anything right because you're actually helping yourself stay in it. You become the one that assists yourself in your demise. Now this happens every day, and this happens to Christians every day. Christians leave this earth early because they don't understand that you gotta stop struggling. The greatest war you ever fight is within yourself. Better write that down, because I'm going to. Okay, so you want, when you encounter a trigger event that causes you to want to react in a way that you have been conditioned to, because you've been conditioned in a certain response to a certain thing that happens. So if you feel fear or if you feel rejection, if it reminds you of a trauma event that you had and you start reacting, you have to be able to stop struggling in that moment and say, listen, that is not happening right now. That's not true anymore. You have to take yourself out of the situation. Come on now. See, the greatest thing is not faith. The greatest thing is love. And you gotta remember that God loves you more than he, he, he loves you, he, more than he requires faith. Because everything works through love. And the greatest of these is love. So if you don't have love, you can't function in faith. See, that goes over well. The bottom line is you are excelling in faith, but you're not excelling in love. And why you're not excelling in love is because you gotta remember that God loved you before you did anything wrong. So why do you think he's gonna love you more when you do something right? Because you can get into pride just as quick, thinking you did something good and right as you can if you did it wrong and you're beating yourself up and everybody wants wants you to come out and play and you don't wanna play. The whole thing is a crock. The whole thing is, is, is fake. Both sides are fake. You getting praised for something you did and you getting mocked for something you did, it, the whole thing is, is fake. 
You should be just as worried when people are praising you as you are when people reject you. I, I mean, the thing of it is, is both of those things are, are the, the ditch on the, in the side of the road. Rejection and acceptance are what the, how the devil plays it. You know, I, I, I don't want to be accepted by the world. I have a problem, and you should discern it as a problem if you get along with the world. Okay, so the power, amen. The power of God steps in in your weakness. This is during your trigger event. So while somebody is saying something that reminds you of something that's happened before, you just picture yourself hitting them and slapping them. You, you, picture, you picture the anger, you, the situation that you went through in your past causes a trigger, it triggers something and then you want to respond. The thing of it is, is that demons have no authority until you respond and manifest. Did you hear that? The devil doesn't have any right, he has no power, unless he can get a person to side with him. You have to agree to it. So you're being bombarded in your mind. Your faith is fine. Come on now, your faith is fine. Actually, your finances are better than you think because the devil doesn't have them. But if he starts to have them, then you're going to see stuff manifesting. So that is why the tithe was made by God, was to take a part of it and give it to him, and then the whole portion is pre preserved. And that's what the scripture says. This was given before the law, so it's not Moses, it's not the law. People tithe before the law, and they tithe after the law. And Jesus even said, you guys tithe your leaves from your herb garden. They even took a tenth of their mint and cumin. And Jesus said, but you won't even take care of your parents and all those who are hurting around you. He said, why don't you do both? Don't neglect the former, but do the latter as well. So right then and there, it was talking about tithing. So. How can you say that tithing has is, is gone away? I mean, I'm just telling you. Okay, so in the Bible, it guarantees you that if you do this, if you give God, it's not yours anyway. It was always his. Just like the fruit in the garden, that tree was his. It was never Adam and Eve's. He would come down and eat from it, but they were not to touch it. It was just to remind them that they are not God, that he, he is God. They, were, they never died, they never sinned. So after a while, they're gonna start thinking they're God. So there had to be something in, in the garden that was God's. There's gotta be something in your life in every area of your life that is God's. It preserves the whole. So it says that if you do this and you don't rob me in this, he said, I will open the floodgates of heaven and you won't be able to contain the blessing that I pour out on you. What in the New Testament is better than that? Okay, because it says I will rebuke the devourer. The God will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Okay, but that's not what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking to you about trigger events. Okay, so Jesus was confronting things that people were putting ahead of what he said. They made, they made laws, they made up stuff to control people. Big word tonight, trigger events, control. The whole idea is to get you to respond and manifest, and that's control. Because if you, if you find yourself not being able to resist temptation, if you find yourself being drawn away by your own evil desires, that's never preached. That would turn a, a mega church into a small Bible study if they would preach this. But James said, it's you. You're being de deceived and seduced and pulled away by your own evil desires. That was a New Testament James pastor in Jerusalem, relative of Jesus. Paul said, if I let my body rule me, 
he said, after being an apostle and preaching Christ, that I'd be thrown away, a castaway. I would lose the race. I'd be taken out of the race. Spiritual junk heap. An apostle. After doing everything right, if he let his body rule him, he would be a castaway, it says. Okay? I'm not talking about any of this stuff either tonight. I just want to show you some things that Satan wants to gain control of different parts of your life. So if you don't respond and don't allow a manifestation, he, ha- he cannot do a thing. Jesus Christ already defeated him on the cross, made a show of him openly. He defeated him. But I want to tell you something. The solution to this for you students is, is not the degree. It's what you went through to get it. It's what you heard the thousands of hours of the word of God. This is the thing. The key is John chapter 1, verse 12. It says that those who embraced him and his teachings, he gave them the power, which is the word authority. It's not dunamis. The authority to become sons of God. Okay, that didn't mention any fire tunnel, any laying on of hands, any offering. It didn't, it didn't mention any Bible school. It said that those who embraced him as the son of God, embraced his teaching, he gave those people, only those, not the ones that gave the big offerings. He didn't even say tithers. Okay, so we embrace him. So when you embrace him, when you're encountering this trigger event, when you feel like you're becoming unnerved, you're becoming afraid, you're reverting back to reactionary, where you've been, you've been trained to respond a certain way. Satan wants to control you. He wants to say, that's my boy. That's my girl. He wants you to feel pain. He hates you. Don't pray for him. There is no repentance for Satan. He hates you. He wants, he wants you dead. And that's why when you, when you look at what's being done to you in your own country, you got to remember that those entities are behind people and they're trying to control you. They're trying to dictate what you believe and what you see. And when you see something, they say, you didn't see that. Well, it's too late. You don't even need an iPhone 15 these days. Your flip phone will, go to, will take a picture. My point is this, is going forward, can you, can you do a sila? Can you do a pause when you get into a trigger event? When you start to feel rejected, when you start to feel weak, that is the opportunity for the resurrection power of God to manifest. Okay, but what I, I saw when I was in heaven is that what, the way we were teaching, the way we were instructing people in, in the body of Christ was to keep them strong, keep them positive, keep them their upper lip, keep them from quivering their lips, crying, to keep them out of the emotion of it, robbing you of the actual healing and experience that you need to encounter. If you lose somebody, you need to cry. You need to release that. You, that is a valid thing. You've lost somebody, everybody has. The thing that is, is, is the Pharisees would not allow people to be people. They controlled the people by putting burdens on them. When Jesus said, you're supposed to be taking them off. So what Satan wants to do is fragment you, break you up in pieces in your mind so that you can't deal with parts of yourself. And then those demons come and say, I'll take this room, I'll take this room, I'll take this room. And they start to split you apart. And then there are individuals that'll be sent to you to get you to hide in that room. And you'll, you'll, you'll have personality changes. You'll go into different compartments in your, and you see this in your friends, but do you see it in yourself? Because there is one body and one head, which means we have one mind. Okay, so if you see the, dis- the, the dissension and all the division, if you see that the, the, gift, the gift of criticism is the most prominent gift of the spirit. 
when you sit and you mock people and you do nothing. I mean, that's not gonna go well in the day of judgment and you will face judgment. You will face the Lord Jesus Christ as a Christian. You just wanna be on the right side of the sword. You wanna submit to the sword now. You don't wanna wait and find out what you missed. Because the hardest thing for me is what I missed. It wasn't what I did wrong. It was what I didn't do at all. Did everybody hear that? I wasn't told all the things I did wrong. I was shown the list. It was pages of books I was supposed to write and all kinds of things that I was supposed to have accomplished. And I didn't do it because I didn't know that I could. But it was written about me anyway. And that bothers me because the body of Christ is supposed to be informing us the fivefold is supposed to be building us up so that we know who we are and we tap into this. Tap into the knowledge and wisdom of what's written about us and not being focused on what we can't do. You see, the trigger event, you're supposed to slide into the, what Paul said, when I'm weak, I'm strong. You slide right into resurrection power. Instead, we're like, no, we got it, we're gonna manage it. And so all of us have to stand back from you and put orange cones around you until you're done destroying yourself. But see, that's not what the body's supposed to do. So if, you, if you're, you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in prosperity, it's like, well, you better because all of us do and we're gonna have to foot your bills. We're gonna have to pay. You know, if, you, if you're not gonna let God prosper you, then you're putting the burden on everybody else. See, somebody's gotta say this stuff. Why do you believe in, why do you believe in cer uh, certain things? It says that those who embraced him and his teachings, he gave the power to become sons of God. See, you just don't embrace Jesus. Jesus is the word and the word is also the spirit. They're all interchangeable. And so if you say, if you say Jesus, he's gonna answer you. If you say, hey, word, he's gonna answer you. If he says, if you say spirit, he's gonna answer you. Well, I thought there was three. Yeah, there is, but they're all one. And in this world that's so fallen, we don't understand the dimensions. There's many dimensions. The Trinity has no problem with themselves. We have a problem with it because we are on a, a world that's fallen and most of the dimensions are invisible to us. But, but you should be focusing on the Word and the Spirit. So me laying hands on you can't fix you. It's not scriptural. Me prophesying over you may fix you if you actually take it and use it as a weapon of warfare like Paul told Timothy. If you use prophecy as a weapon, you actually pick it up and use it, yes, then it helps you. But obviously Paul knew that Timothy, that the words he had spoken over had not come to pass because Timothy didn't pick them up and wage war with them. And that's what's happened to this country. We're watching it be destroyed. And the person who was appointed to do that was sent down the river. Okay? You gotta accept that. Okay, so we're in the desert, we're in a circle. So how many more laps do you wanna do? How many more, how many more disappointments do you wanna have every four years? Okay, you can do this and not even leave your house. We can do this tonight and not, and not have to do anything. You won't have to miss a meal. You won't have to give an offering. You don't have to quote the word 500 times. Just believe it once and speak it. Try that. Do you ever try that? <laughs> Be a sniper. One shot, one kill. That's their motto. One shot. I'm serious. They have two, they have two rounds. A lot of these guys have two rounds. One target. If they... they, they it, they come back with the second round. If they come back with none, they miss the first time. How, how accurate do you think God wants you to be? I would rather just get a word from God and stick with that than go to your favorite prophet. I mean, I would just go ahead and pray and then you don't have to give an offering, that's what I do. I save a lot of money. Come on now. Do you think that God had all your words written down in heaven before there were prophets? Do you, do you believe that, do you believe that you can still go to heaven and not give in the offering? Because you, you, may, you may be under control. 
if you don't believe that actually you can get a word yourself. In my life right now, and in your life right now after tonight, the best thing that can ever happen to you is when nothing happens, when it's so quiet and you just love it. You love it when it's quiet, you love it when nobody's saying a word, and if somebody says something, it actually hurts you. You're, you get your full pain, that's what happens to me. If, if God's talking to me and people are talking too, they don't know it, I'm like, I give them the hand. I'm like, and I don't want anybody touching me, I don't want anybody talking to me, because my full attention is, is the creator of the universe and the creator of my spirit is talking to me. I'm gonna take that thing, I'm gonna beat the living daylights out of the devil tomorrow Amen. by what he's saying to me. So I love it when nobody's talking. I, I love it when nobody has a word, nobody has an offering, nobody has anything. It's fine. It's me and God. And God gets the glory for everything, okay? So you can't let these trigger events slide you into a conditioned response. Everybody understand that? Uh, I love you students, but this is the stuff that's gonna keep you alive. This is the stuff that's gonna get you on the map. You're on the map in paper, you know, a certificate. You're, you've got that document, but what you have inside of you is, is what the devil knows and fears, is what's inside of you. The decisions you make are based on where you're going, not where you've been. Every decision you make from now on is not based on failure, rejection, an eye roll from somebody. Amen. Amen. Listen, if somebody gives me an eye roll, I'm on the right track <laughs> because cause that's a mocking spirit. And I, I know there's professional eye rollers I know it, I know, I know people think it's ridiculous. Some of the things that, that are taught in the Bible are ridiculous. They're, they're, they're really, they confound the wise. But God didn't choose them, he chose you. Now you're, you're wise in your spirit, but your head has to get hooked up with it. Okay, your head has to get mean with the devil. Your, your, your head has to discern that evil, entities have gotten into evil people and they're over you, period. There has been a marriage of these evil entities. That's what you're seeing. And these entities are working within people and technology to fragment you. So they compartmentalize you and make you like five or six different people, essentially. You can take this or leave it. I'm saving your life right now. You got, you got to own it. You are being deceived. You are being lied to. And the church is involved with it. The Pharisees were involved with it. What do you think what do you think's going on now? We haven't we haven't changed in two thousand years. Somebody needs to say it's not working. Whatever we're doing, let's stop that. And let's go back to the original plan. The original plan is, is God wants to do something for you that you have nothing to do with. Because he wants to get glory for it. But you keep getting yourself out of the situation, the very platform that he's building for your launch. I didn't say lunch, I said launch. <laughs> You're being launched into the supernatural. But every time this happens, you want to deliver yourself. When you crave something, you have to see that as a false God that wants you to bow to it. That's the only way you're gonna overcome these things. I wish somebody would have told me that when I was a teenager. You have to label things as the adversary. It doesn't get better because you look the other way. I remember this, I remember this. After a year, after a year, maybe it was two years, but the Lord Jesus Christ appeared to me about eight years ago and he, he said, I want you to write that book, Heavenly Visitation. I said, I don't wanna write that book. That is like very sacred. 
and I don't, I don't want to share it. And he said, that, it's a mandate that you share, Heavenly, that you write that book. And so then Kathy comes to me and she said, you know, I just really feel like you're supposed to write that book. And I said, no, I'm fine. I, I, I'm fine. I'm going to retire from Southwest Airlines and me and you, we had worked really hard. We had two houses, we're one in Seattle and one here, and we were fine with that. There's no alligators here. There's no rain. You know, it's fine. Everything's great. Seattle, there's rain. If you want rain, we just go there. You know, and we were fine. We were fine with that. Okay, but God wanted to influence a whole world. He wanted to influence a whole people with something that I was saying was very sacred and I held to myself. So I said, I can't write a book. I don't know how to write a book. And I don't know. He said, it's a testimony. Just write out your testimony. He said, there's, there's seven things I told you that I want you to share in this book. And then there's another book that I will write in a couple years. So it'll be Heavenly Visitation too, And I will get into all the other things. But it's, you haven't got the first part of this yet. So when I did that, the devil fought me for a year and a half. Okay, all my weakness was shown because I was, I was convinced I couldn't do this. So it took a year and a half to write my first book. My second book, when I broke through, it took five days. My second book was Days of Heaven on Earth. And one of my favorite books, it took five days. They were 18 hour days, but they were five days. And I prayed in tongues. Are you ready? I prayed in tongues for two hours and then I wrote for one hour. And I did that for five days. Kathy watched it happen. The carpet is still worn out from me pacing back and forth upstairs. And she, all she would do is she would just leave me alone. She would just leave me alone. And she, I would pray in tongues and then she'd hear me walking pacing, praying in tongues, and I'd go sit and I'd type and write. And then I'd go back to tongues for two hours and then I would write. This started to happen with each book after that. And now I have people that just take everything that I'm preaching and teaching on and then we work to get it together and if there's something else I need to write about it or, what, or speak about, then that's how we do it now. But the point of it is, is that I, I had to move into the strength and power of, the, of God in a supernatural event that happened. When the trigger event was happening, I mean, I, like, as I'm telling you this, I can feel it. And I just want to start crying because I never want to have to go through what all of you have had to go through just to get your degree. Because you have to write. You have to write your testimony book for masters and then you have to write a book on a subject that will be published on Amazon to get your doctorate. It has to be that good. On a subject. The reason why is, is that when I broke through, boy, did I break through. And it was like the throttle just like fell off and it's just, it's set on max power and it fell off and it's like, I guess I'm just stuck at max power. So when I wanna land, I'll just like, shut the engine off and make sure I've got a good glide path, you know, and, and everything, because it's just all full throttle, okay? But I had to break through, but I couldn't break through by managing my trigger events. I had to get rid of the switch. I had to automatically run to God and not run and bow down to an idol because that's control. Satan wants to fragment you and control you. So good. Amen. 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 Okay. So I will have some scriptures for you to help you. This is what I do. The, 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 to manage a trigger event, you got to know that the spirit is not going to change anything about himself. So as a, his personality, the plan, he's got the script right there. He's got everything already written out about you. Nothing changes just because you feel a certain way or, or people give you the eye roll or, or they stop whatever it is that they were helping you with. They stop. They don't want to be friends anymore. They, they, want to, they want to distance you. They want to mock you. I remember this happened to me. I'm going to say this 
in the right spirit. But it got to the place where every time I would yield to John chapter one, verse 12, instead of the trigger event to cause me to go into a tailspin and, and self-medicate, so to speak. So, you know, like whatever it is that you do, to medicate, whatever you do to tap into your own, your own, like I used to go skydiving just to get a hit because, you know, you can't do cocaine because you're a Christian, you know. But I go skydiving just to, like because I'm serious. Your brain says, you know what, you're going to die. I'm going to dump everything into your bloodstream. And at least you're going to enjoy your death, you know. I mean, because that's what your body, your brain says, you're an idiot. You just jumped out of a perfectly good airplane. It's the biggest high I've ever felt besides meeting the Lord Jesus Christ and kissing my wife, of course, you know. That fireworks display, you know, is those things are notable, but I knew guys that that made five or six jumps to my one in in a day. They they would jump out with me and they'd already be when I landed, they had already folded their chute. They were like folding their chute and when the plane landed, they got back in it and they were giving the guy twenty bucks and going back up again to fourteen thousand feet. They do it five or six times, trying to beat the sun down in this city down there in Eloy. And, and I, I would go down there and I think, you know, I love this hit, but they're doing it five or six times in a night. And they got it rigged up. They would, they would try to beat the airplane down. The airplane, the pilot would try to beat them down. So he'd go into like a spiral to try to beat, uh, he'd dump us out and then try to, to beat us down. And these guys, man, these guys were as high as a kite all the time. They were always happy. But they were running, they were self-medicating. Their body was dumping all this into their bloodstream. And so these days, there are people, there are agencies that love to cause pain to people. They get a high off of it. They, they, they love to torture people. They love to torture children. They love to kidnap. They love to, to drug you. They love to, they, to induce pain to you. They love to introduce things into society. Oh yeah, what are you looking at me for? What do you think I saw on the other side that I didn't want to come back for? And this year, you're going to hear it. From now on, you're going to hear it, what I know. Because you need to know this. Why is there a million children missing every year? Why, why, do, why do we spend money sending it over to another country to help them and we can't even solve our own problems here? What about the drug problem? Let's, let's start with leadership. The reason why things are not being taken care of and addressed is because leadership is involved. Come on now. You know. Okay, so in the body of Christ with Jesus Christ appearing to John, who's the one that wrote, those who loved him and embraced his teachings, he gave them the power to become sons of God. And there's translations that say many things, so just you're gonna have to read a lot of translations to see what that says. But the bottom line is this, is that what Jesus and John had had a conversation about on the Al Patmos, has not been resolved today and a lot of the issues that were spoken about in that day. Okay, so that tells me that the existing church does not want to fix it. Okay, because it can't be, everybody listening, it can't be that we can't fix it because if God's requiring us to not be lukewarm, then why are we still lukewarm? Somebody needs to fix the hot water tank. Now think about this. If it was, if it's, if it were required to be at a certain standard and we're required to fix things because he says it's broken, I'm about to spew you out of your mouth. What, what is worse than being spewed out of God's mouth? He's talking to the church. He's talking to Christians there. Okay, I'm saying this because I want you students to pick up where I have, I have handed it to you. I don't want you to back off. 
I want you to, to, to preach the word of God with such a sharp sword that people are, are not gonna manage their trigger events anymore. They're gonna, they're gonna fix it. They're gonna, they're gonna get fixed. They're gonna let God do what it is that needs to be done. So if it, if it you wonder, you wonder if any of us were in authority, how long the drug problem would last? Or, or the missing kids? Like how long would it actually keep going on? Because I know exactly what we can do. But the church is supposed to be, this, this, is supposed to separate the entity from the human through prayer, authority. The, the church is supposed to forbid things and then they're forbidden in heaven. If you, if you allow them, they're allowed. If you forbid them, they're forbidden. Whatever you permit will be permitted. Whatever you, you, you uh, uh, forbid will be forbidden. Doesn't it say that? Okay, this isn't talking about, this isn't talking about when your hair dryer breaks and you're rebuking the devil. This is, this is talking about your tax return going to another country. This is talking about the benefits that you can get by just going to Mazalan and walking back over the border. You get better benefits than you would have as a citizen. You could do it a couple of times a month and get your, you know, credit card and your, 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 you know, your spending account. It's, it's better than working. They're handing you cards. Do, do any of you like, I just read my Bible. That's what that, everybody tells you. I just read my Bible. It's like, yeah, well, while, you, while you're doing, you read your Bible, but you also watch and pray. Okay, so here's some scripture verses. Let me try to get through this. Um, Acts 2, 4. It says, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. What does that look like? Because I don't see that very much. What is being filled with the Spirit? Well, they began to speak in tongues, it says. As the Spirit gave them utterance. When they were, when they were filled with the Spirit, they began to speak in tongues. All through the book of Acts, it says the Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues. So if you were the devil and you knew that was the case, as it is mentioned eight or nine times in the book of Acts, they did not coach them. There was no teaching. The Spirit of God would come upon people and they would start speaking in other languages that they didn't know. Period. Okay? Supernatural event. Well, if you were the devil, you would fight tongues. If you wanted the church to be poor, you would tell them you don't need to tithe. You don't have to give. And I tell people that they don't have to give, but that's because you've been beat over the head. You've already given into the next millennium. So I'm giving, I'm give, uh, the Lord is releasing you from the bondage of having to do something. You need to do it because you love God and you know you're supposed to do it. That, I mean, that's, that's what the offerings I receive from you are your willing offerings where God is directing you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay, so he who speaks, this is uh, 1 Corinthians 14 too, he who speaks in a, in a tongue does not speak to men. Okay, now this is in chapter 14. If you look at chapter 12, he's talking about the assembly talking about getting together in the church. He's writing a letter to the church and he's talking about the, the, uh, the goings on in a meeting. And he's saying, in explaining that there is a personal prayer language that you pray when the Spirit of God comes on you. How many times does this have to be taught before we all accept it? It's amazing that the scriptures clearly says that Paul said, listen, when you are together and the spirit is operating, the nine gifts of the spirit, the nine gifts of the spirit are for the assembly. They're, they're to, for you to minister to someone else in the body. It does not involve your own personal prayer life. Now all of us as believers, this is a believers meeting, 
all of us as, as believers and say, well, we're all gonna pray to God in, in the spirit, in tongues. We can all agree to just do that. But I'm not gonna ask for somebody to interpret because it says you're speaking to God. It says when you pray in an unknown tongue, your spirit prays, but you're speaking not to men, but to God. But then he says in the assembly, we have words, we have all these words, we have prophecy, we have, uh, we have tongues, we have, he said, but he said, if you speak in the public assembly to the congregation by the gift of the tongues, which is different than your prayer language, you better have an interpreter. In other words, you may have somebody there that has the gift of interpretation of tongues. It's just like in the movie, you know, does anybody speak jive? I do. It's that simple. If there's no one there to interpret, then this, the operation of the Spirit is, is that you don't speak in tongues in the congregation because no one understands what you're saying because you're speaking now by the Spirit to the congregation, but there has to be interpretation of tongues. Does everybody follow that? There's nine gifts of the Spirit. However, it says here when you pray in the Spirit, you're not speaking unto men. Okay, so it can't be talking about the gifts of the Spirit because he just went through that. And it says, you know, if you're gonna speak in the congregation of men, you better have somebody to interpret it. Okay, so you've got, listen, everybody listen. From now on, doctrinally, you have to be very, very clear from now on because people are being robbed by sitting at tables and arguing about it. And while they're arguing about it, people are not participating in the supernatural. God gave us the Holy Spirit. He came upon those people without being coached and they spoke in other tongues, okay? So when you pray in tongues alone or in a group where you just agree, we're not doing the gifts of spirit here, there is not gonna be an interpretation. We're all believers. Paul said you don't wanna do this with unbelievers present because they think you're crazy, which they do. And they have a good reason for that because you're not edifying the body. If I speak to you in tongues and I don't tell you what I'm saying, you just think I'm spiritual. But it doesn't improve you, you, you don't improve from that. And that's why the body is suffering right now is because we, are, we, we don't understand that we can fix things by use, using the things that God has already given us, using the, the way that God said to do it. When you're together, it's the body. When you're alone, it's you and God. Paul told the Corinthians in chapter three, verse one, listen, 1 Corinthians three, verse one. That's after he talks about the deep things of God by the spirit in chapter two. He says, you know, I wish I could address you as spiritual, but he says, you're, he says, you're not. You're not spiritual. And they had all this stuff going on. But Paul didn't consider them spiritual because they were used in the gifts. He said, you're mere babes. When you should be eating meat, you're, you're still on the bottle. And he even said, when I come to you, he said, I'm upset with you. And there's some among you are probably not gonna survive my visit. He said, do I, I want you to decide now, let me know before I come, am I coming with a whip? All right, come in with a kiss. He said, you decide. Well, where are those apostles today? Where's the, where, I don't want a jellyfish over me. I want a backbone. I want, I want somebody with a backbone. Don't you? Of course you do. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, he who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That's what it says right there. Romans 8, 26, likewise the Spirit also helps us in our weakness, not in our strengths, and so we are built up, and that was the phase we went through. We're being built up in our faith, building, built up in our minds and being positive, so that the world actually says, wow, I'm really impressed, you know, and you got a better light show than some of these rock bands. I love that church. You got the fog machine, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, your coffee shop in your church is like five-star rating. And, you know, but the people, the people are having th things happen in their home 
that are destroying them, them as a family because the devil is not afraid or impressed with what you have in your driveway. You gotta make the devil acknowledge his demise. You gotta make him acknowledge that you're in and he's out. And you have to be sure that you are living that way. You're disciplined and not allowing him to manifest in your life. You cannot respond when he lies to you. And unless it's laughing, you can laugh. And I, I do, I tell him, I say, hey, can you just say that again? Can you just say it again? It's, that, is, that is hilarious. And then, you know, of course, they, they don't say it again, but they, they, wanna, they, wanna, uh, they wanna just pound you all day with these lies and torment you mentally because they want to separate and fragment you. All right, so, for we know not what we should pray as we ought, verse 26 of Romans 8, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. Romans 8, 27, the Spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of God. I mean, what a deal. What a deal. So by the Spirit of God, I command you to stay with the script for your life. I command you to. I mean, with the authority that, that Paul preached on, I, I have that authority in my life. Just like Paul, when he preached, I'm not Paul, I don't want to be Paul. Because you'd be visiting me in jail. But if you really want to be like Jesus, he only lasted three and a half years in ministry and they killed him. Brother Hagen told us in class, if you, if you start imitating Jesus, you won't last long either in, in ministry. Thanks a lot. Yeah, nice encouragement there. <laughs> but, but he did the will of the Father and he lasted three and a half years. That's what was present on the earth against him in people at the time. What do you imagine it's like now with the entities that we have that we're dealing with, okay? So, you know, you can sit there, roll your eyes about entities and, you know, all this stuff. But the thing of it is, is it doesn't add up. The math doesn't add up. There is something, uh, there is a dark kingdom working in this world that appears to be more powerful than the church. That's ridiculous. God wants to display his glory, but he wants to get the glory. If an uh, individual's gonna get the glory, he will not do it. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you preach the word of God and, and it feels like it's foreign. You know, it, it feels like, if, when, you, when, I, when I receive the word of God and I look at the scriptures, it appears like it is from another world, which it is, but it's not like, like it's not so evident that people are walking in it. You know, you don't have to watch a TV show and buy the product and read the book and listen to the DVD to, to get what I'm walking in. I didn't get it from, I didn't get it that way, so why would you think you would? I got it because Jesus showed up and said, I bought you, you're mine. That's what he did. I mean, he showed up in my room in Seattle and he said, I bought you, you're mine. And he was, it was, it was, it was signing a covenant with the Father for my life. I got up out of bed, he was standing in my room and we were in heaven and I was standing before the judgment seat, the judgment bench. And I realized that the effectiveness of a human being on the earth is not based on their own abilities. It's based on their inabilities. <laughs> you see, my reward in heaven is your fruit of your life. That's what my reward is. I don't, wanna, I don't want a mansion. I don't want a vehicle on my driveway. I don't want a position. What I want is to know that I made a difference with my life. And that means I have to, I have to do something for someone else. I have to produce a crop in keeping with my repentance. I have to produce fruit. 
Mm-hmm. So, Satan wants to create people like Jason Bourne, where they're programmed to kill, programmed to do anything with a trigger event. Just a phone call with a code word. If you think that that is not true, then you need to do your research because there's hundreds of thousands of individuals out there that have already been programmed. Oh, this is just page one of 30,000 pages. Trust me, I'm, do, I'm, I'm really doing you a favor by not telling you everything. But I've just about had it. In 2024, I've had it with people lying to you and withholding the truth from you. But the only way that you can win against a enemy is to covenant with somebody who's already beat him. Because you can't be him. That's where I'm getting with this message. And if you all get it, we can go home. But I'm going to hold you here until coffee talk tomorrow morning if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't start nodding your head. Okay. All right. Jude 20 says, But beloved, building yourself up in the most holy of faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, and remaining in the love of God. Okay, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. So my mind doesn't participate in this. You have to decide before you go out tonight of this building that your mind does not participate in spiritual things. If you don't define this, there are people that are going to be hijacked around you are going to beat you up because they're gonna, they're gonna wage war in the psychological realm. You gotta, you gotta have your time with God and you have to have your conversation. It's none of your business what I'm saying to God. It's none of your business what he's saying to me. Okay, that's the person, personality of God for you. That's your intimate relationship. You pray in a spirit. If I were you, I'd start out with 10 minutes. That's what I did. It's so all I could do to do 10 minutes. I worked up to 30 minutes. Then I worked up to two hours and I thought I had, I had, I had I thought I had won the lottery. And then Kathy and I would go 14 hours. What happens is, is your mind has to stand down. That is therapeutic in training. What you realize is, is that the spiritual part of you does not know defeat. There are no limitations. You'll notice after a while, you just you just give your mind a rest. It's gonna scream, it's gonna say, hey, let's go get that chicken in the refrigerator. Hey, your phone's ringing. I'm sure, you know, you're gonna miss something. Your show's on at seven. All of a sudden, everything will try to pull you back into the mental realm, the psychological realm, because Satan can beat you there. And he needs you to watch all those shows because he wants to brainwash you. He wants you to, to numb you down. See, all those movies are based, I know this, those, all those movies, the people that, that write those scripts get that from the intelligence agencies. They are presenting to you in broad daylight what they're actually doing. I mean, the Simpsons aren't that smart. So uh, have you ever figured that out? Well, lo just look up Project Looking Glass or Stargate. It wasn't just a show. That's a document. And I have friends that, that have those documents. It's so funny is, is that we're waiting to experience something to believe it. But God told your father Abraham to leave and I'll tell you when you get there. And that's how he set the pace with all of us. It's called faith. Faith is trust. Faith is knowing that who has you is your deliverer, your healer, your financer, you, the, the person who loves you. He's the one that sets the pace in your life. The pace that you should all have is that you should, first of all, prioritize your relationship with God as spirit to spirit. God is a spirit. John 20, 4, 24 says he's a spirit. Those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Doesn't say anything about smoke machines or, or the best drum set or the best drummer. I just stepped into the glory cloud. I, this is, it's 
is gonna be a long night. No. <laughs> the, the spirit is the one who gives you life. The, the river of life, the waters that well up from your spirit, Jesus said, are eternal life. Amen. How long is that? And what kind of life is eternal life compared to this life? Okay, so all the information you have won't even fit in, in, a, in, a, in a seed the size of a mustard seed. That what you know is, is only worth it if you take it and use it. You have to plant it. So the mustard seed has to be planted. That's all you need. It's just one mustard seed. That's it, which means one word from God, which means one moment with God, yes. which is a spiritual thing that comes into this realm through, through your spirit, up into your mind, and then your body is a magical thing that never happens. You actually do it. <laughs> you have to, it has to be so powerful that you're so fully convinced about it that it starts to change and become your strength from a weakness. It has to transfer through the realms to manifestation. It has to. Does everybody hear me? All of you students, this, this is for you. Everything that's been done for you the last seven years is for you. It's not for me. I don't need to do this. I already know this stuff. I've already experienced it. I, I have no wants. I have no needs. I have no wants. Nothing. The only th last thing I want to see is, is I want to see, see a certain individual get thrown into the lake of fire. That's about it. <laughs> and I'm willing to pay for the prime seats. I might be the one that gives the last kick. You know, it, it. but while I'm down here with you, I'm driving out devils. Yes. That's that's. Literally, literally, if there's a devil, he's, got, he's going. That's my mentality. He's got to go. I don't care who it's in. Does everybody understand that? If there's a devil in, 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 in a situation, the devil has to go. Sickness has to go. I mean, I'm, not, I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to have a discussion about healing. There's going to be no discussion with the devil. Right? Okay, so you have stuff happening in your house. You have stuff happening over your house. Okay, you have all kinds of situations. You have personality changes that you see in individuals. You, you, you get ahead. The Lord starts speaking to you, and all of a sudden, people start acting up. And people that are, are, are supposed to be your friends are not your friends anymore. Amen. What do you think happened? You heard from God in your spirit, and you're doing everything that God is asking you to do. But see, Satan uses leadership. Satan gets into people that can influence you. Amen. People that you look up to, that you will have a hesitation. Listen, there are times where you gotta act quickly and you gotta know the situation and you gotta do something about it. There are other times where you give people a chance, but there are times where this is not working into something good and you, you, gotta, you gotta take it, okay? What happens is, is children that are molested. It's usually a, a leader or a, a, a parent or a relative. Well, that's hard for a child to figure out what's going on. That's Satan. Okay, it's the same with your government. You send somebody to represent you. Well, it would bother me if they end up on some island. And I guarantee you Gilligan's not there. Okay, so if you, if you don't clear cut things by the Spirit, then these things will continue and not change. If you don't have that spiritual part of you where you're giving at least 30 minutes a day to praying in the spirit, which your mind is gonna flip out, but it's supposed to. The scripture says that it's not gonna participate in it. You have to be disciplined. This is not gonna happen because you feel like it. If you're waiting for feelings, it's never gonna happen. If you wanna fix your finances, it's not gonna happen by, by yelling at your checkbook or your credit card. It's not gonna happen that way.
It's not gonna happen because you give by faith in an offering. No, I just lost the last friend I had right there. No more faith friends, okay? The, the, the thing that frees you up from demonic power is the fact that you embrace the, t- the teachings of Jesus and he gave you the power to become sons of God. Sons of God don't pay bills. Amen. <laughs> My dad paid all the bills. And he said, when you're 18, you and the tapeworm are out. That's what he said of it. <laughs> he was convinced I had a tapeworm. <laughs> he said, there's no way that you can eat that much and stay at the weight you're at. I said, Dad, I count up my calories every day. It's 10,700 calories I burn. Those days are over, but I mean. Now I'm on some uh, econo plan. I don't burn anything, you know. I look at food and I, I mean, you know, I have to just look. It's just a look. Yeah, it's a, it's a seafood diet. <laughs> so, my, my discipline got me through. God already got me through. He gave me everything I need for life or godliness. But I have to turn myself in and say, listen, I know everybody else does this and does this and they're going to heaven anyway. I know that. I know, I know. But when I, when I got saved, I stopped swearing. And I had no desire for other things. Then there are other things that continue to stay. Well, that's my, still my responsibility. Now, I'm, I can wait for a supernatural event and die without that deliverance. I don't know why God chooses to do certain things and others he doesn't, but the thing of it is, is I have to be accountable for my own life because even if you don't think you are, you're gonna find out you are. And you're gonna, you're gonna I, I mean, Jesus might show you this film up there. Say, so, yeah, see, you knew. That's the way it really is. Okay, so I want to, to stop the enemy. I, want, I don't want, the word resist means forcefully push back. It doesn't mean stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I literally believe that everything that we do as students in the word of God is with, that we treat the devil, it, I, I picture him after this, after this sermon, when I'm going to my room tonight, I picture the demon saying, we ain't going there again. Yeah. Those, we've lost a lot of people tonight. You know, that's the way I, I think. I think like if I give you, so if I pray for you, if I pray for you and I prophesy over you, see, where, where, where did the disciples do that? Where did Jesus do that? Where did he form lines and pray for people like that? He prayed for people. He cast devils out. But in the early church, where does it say we had a fire tunnel and all these other things that we do? Or offerings to get something. Jesus said, if you love me, you'll obey me. It has nothing to do with the laying on of hands. So the Jesus I met was the, the red letter edition of the Bible. He was, he was exactly like the red letters, but it, it, it seemed like it was too simple for today's culture. It's just too simple. Because you gotta like reinvent it and you gotta present it so people need to buy the product. And they gotta come to your church because you're anointed. They, they, gotta, they gotta give to you, they gotta do this. Where, what, what, where does it talk about, where does it talk about these things in the Bible? You don't want my anointing. The anoint, what I'm operating on under 
is the Father. What, it's the same, it's the same, I don't even call it, it's an anointing, but it's really a mantle. But it's the Father in this place that says, we're done here. Stop struggling. You can't please me anymore. So let's just walk right. Let's clean it up and walk like you know me. That's what God is saying. Walk like you know me. You feel all that? You feel that? That's not my anointing. I, 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 I don't ever come down. Anything I do, it's not my anointing. None of this is my anointing. You don't, you, don't want, you don't want my anointing. What God is doing is placing his spirit on the body of Christ, and we're all being built up into maturity and unity, okay? There's just two things left on the list. We're, we're almost done. And I, I told Kathy I wanna finish at 9.30, and we got six minutes, so we're fine. Every one of you has to see yourself as written about and that God had great plans that are doable, but they're not doable by you. The supernatural is not based on what you can do. The supernatural is based on the impossible. If you'll believe, nothing shall be impossible to you. You want the hard cases. You want the devils that won't leave. You, you want the hard cases. You want the impossible cases to be handed to you. But you, got, but you don't wanna be on the list of being an impossible case with God. And a lot of you are, he's like looking at you and it's like, are, I don't know if they're gonna get it in this lifetime. Because Jesus was really concerned that they were not getting it. He says, how long am I gonna be with you? You guys gotta get this. Why are you doubting? Peter, straighten up, you know? And he was always constantly like, I'm not gonna be with you much longer. You gotta get this. You cast the devils out. You heal the sick. You raise the dead. And they were like, Lord, we couldn't. And he didn't let off on them. He never lowered the standards so they could feel better. And that's what's happened in our generation. The leadership has backed off. And, the, and you can see that the, the governments of the world move into that spot that was supposed to be occupied by God in your life there was a transference of power. And so you see this. So now you gotta fall back on the covenant. You're gonna have to fall back on miracles. You're gonna have to fall back on what's written about Phoenix. You're gonna have to, you're gonna literally have to say, Lord, we messed up, we repent. We got ourselves in this situation. So now we're gonna fall back on your mercy what is it that must happen in Phoenix? What must happen on this earth right now? Because it's, trust me, we've, we've already went through all the barriers. We've already blown through all the warnings. And no one else will say that. You know, it's a, you know, the prophecy of the week, you know. You get your good word. And they're just puffing you up, just plumping you up for the next thing that Satan has. It stops with us. This is it. Amen. Well, thank you. At least somebody got it. Selah. You, you are the generation that God is leaning on because there are things that are written that must happen. But I'm telling you, there are no weak, weak people in heaven. There is nothing weak about God. And you know what? If you just need a hug and you just want God to love you, you know, that's fine. But you better be able to go out and fight a lion and kill the bear afterwards. Not pet them and, and give them like ear trims. And it's, it's, this is, animals are not for a petting zoo. I mean, I'll, I'll just give you an example of how people are deceived. Essentially, all, the, all that Disney does, every, all, these, these, all these shows and movies, it's to train your children that they can pet a lion and ride a killer whale and, and, and kiss a fish, and kiss a crocodile. It's, and then those kids, they see one, they walk up to it, and they're gone. 
And you even see it on, on TikTok. You'll see like these films of this bear, like, oh, I just want you to take this thing, this little thorn out of my he head. It's like, the, the, the thing of it is, is that these things are to set you up for failure. You're being lied to about everything. The cartoons, everything is staged from the beginning. So if you embrace the, the, the Jesus, Jesus who he was and you embrace his teachings, immediately it will take you as fast as you can imagine into a war. Because what's gonna happen is, is everything that Satan has been doing to keep you inactive in whatever way, is gonna confront the fact that you embrace Jesus. So when that moment comes, you have to be willing to stay weak and move into strength by the power of God. Okay, so when you encounter authority, see, when you encounter authority, if it's good authority, then you shouldn't rebel. When Jesus says this is the way it is, then that's the way it is. You don't have to argue with it. You don't have to have a conference on it. You don't have to have a vote on it. Things will start moving immediately when we agree to what Jesus has already taught us and said to us. When we agree to that though, then evil is gonna be appearing as really evil. And your eyes are gonna be open. So tonight, I, I, I plead with you. I, I'm literally pleading with you. I've given you seven good years. I've done everything I can do. I've done 210 courses myself. And then all my staff has gathered around me and helped to present with you a table that is set with everything. You can even get pillows, you know. <laughs> you have been presented the truth in a generation, you've been presented truth that, that is foreign. It should not be. Let the weak say I'm strong in the power of the Spirit. Okay, so, yeah, it is time to go. <laughs> all of you, all of you, all of you are imperfect. I know it's a shock. <laughs> Every one of you are imperfect. Every one of you can improve in, in, in areas of your life. The whole idea of this life is not to qualify for heaven. The whole idea in this life is to find Jesus, accept him, and then go to heaven, okay? But after you are saved, then your whole life is supposed to be given to others. You are to do and work, actually work, James said. Faith without works, faith without manifestation is null and void. It's not for your salvation. It's for the fact that you, as a son or a daughter of God now, have joined the business of the kingdom, the kingdom, and are working in the kingdom for your father. He pays the bills, you do the work. He finances you, he helps you. You have seen this. You've seen this happen with a flight attendant and a hairdresser. No one that qualifies, just someone who, that we, believe, we just believe. But we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe that what he says goes. So, all of you tonight, you need to drive out the devils. Yes. Amen. You have, you have to have nothing to do with the agenda of the devils. Now, in the Geneva Bible, we'll talk about this at Coffee Talk. You cannot miss Coffee Talk tomorrow. 
The, the Geneva Bible was written in 1599 before King James. They killed everyone that was involved with that Bible, including the Catholic Church killed them, including, uh, it, in fact, you know, King James had to, had to uh, change some things because he didn't agree with them. And so if you look at the Geneva Bible, you'll find out why people died. So if you look at Ephesians chapter six, and you look at the levels of entities that Paul said we're wrestling against, there's, there's something else there that's not in the King James. And you know, poor King James, you know, he's, he was a control freak. He was a narcissist, you know. Now everybody, you know, please don't write me, don't waste the digital ink. <laughs> there are many things that need to be corrected in translations. And it has kept us out of the power of God because of it. Because it's a lot stronger in certain areas than what was translated. So you have to look at the translator. You have to look at who was it that did this. Well, this one part of the verse says there was another level. And it was the level of entities where they had, they had actually, that actually were influencing the kings of men. They had intertwined with human beings. So a level that we deal with is hijacked leadership. Come on now. Well, you know, a, a king who's, you know, like Napoleon trying to rule the world is not going to, you know, want that out there. You know, we want the peeps here and that. They'll start rebelling. Come on now. Okay, so these entities have worked their way in and you're supposed to listen to them, respect them, and do what they say. But if the order is against the Constitution, like at what point do you say, listen, man, I don't even wanna say that because I, president says, hey, man. But <laughs> at least I can make a full sentence. Okay, so I'm, I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going to hear the voice of my Father and you're gonna tune yourself in the spirit to this by the word of God and by prayer. And then your mind has to be transformed by matching up what is in the Bible with, what, you, with what, what is happening in your spirit. And then it transfers into your mind so that it processes correctly. If it doesn't process correctly, you cannot manifest it. It's just wishful, it's just wishful thinking. So you can mentally agree with what I'm saying. It's called mental assent. But all you're saying is, yeah, I believe that. But it didn't get into your heart. And that's what's happened for the last several years, a long, a long time. Okay, so what about the evil that is happening inside the earth, because the entities, they're not from other galaxies and planets. They are from the inside the earth. I mean, if you wanna bring the Bible into it. So I wanna talk about that tomorrow in Coffee Talk. You see, they never left. They went down into the caverns. If you read your Bible, you will find out that these entities are inside the earth, on the earth, and above the earth, according to scripture. Jesus gave us authority over those that we can trample. The church has authority over those things in the air. That's why things fall out of the sky sometimes and, they, and the government scratches their head and hauls it away and reverse engineers it. But just wait for coffee talk in the morning. But these entities, they never left. They're fallen beings. Even the ones that left their abode, they're chained in the earth, down inside the earth. They're chained right now. So you're not wrestling against flesh and blood like it says, but the thing of it is, is why are you staring and not doing anything? You're looking at someone who's hijacked, not me, but you're looking at people that are hijacked. 
and you're and you're wanting to you're you're wanting to like hear from God. Well, you've already heard from God. But see, if the scripture doesn't say that in your Bible, but it really did say it at one point, well then you ought to be as a student really like diligent to study now and look up and use other translations besides your favorite. Because your favorite might keep you out of the covenant. So Jesus, in person, said to me, as he took me to the white fence, after, after seeing the throne room and seeing everything in there, and there was a sapphire floor, and it was so holy, and then he took me out to the fence, and he said, all these people were out at the fence, and it represented where the world ended and heaven began. The spirit, it was the realms, but it was also the place. It was all these things in one, and it were, there were people that were Christians just hanging out at the fence, and there weren't that many in the throne. And he said to me, I didn't die on the cross. I didn't hang on the cross is what he said, so that people can sit on the fence. He said, I hung on the cross so they can walk on the sapphire floor of holiness. Okay, so holiness this kind of holiness was relational. It was not positional. In other words, people could obtain the righteousness of God and the holiness of God. Like it says, we're as holy and righteous through the blood of Jesus. We have all that positionally. But relationally, Jesus can say, after we've cast out demons and done miracles, he could say to us, I never knew you. Okay, that is relationship. That's a relationship problem because you can't cast out devils unless... You, I mean, because the seven sons of Sceva couldn't cast the devils out by using the name of Jesus that Paul preached. Do you get it? So why, why do we ignore that verse? Well, ignoring that verse causes us never to grow. We gotta grow into our relationship. Yeah, that's right, you can go to heaven and do this and you know, be a part of this, but is that what God wants for you on this earth? Does he want you to continue to be the same way you were before you were saved? Does he want your lifestyle to be the same? Does, did you notice, like with me, as it, when I got saved, I was healed of things, but I wasn't healed of everything. And I'm healed now, recently, in the last couple of weeks of something, and it was because of a, it wasn't just the fact that, yes, Jesus hung on the cross, and I'm by his stripes, I'm healed. I want to tell you, I believe that. But what, how I got healed of things in my body is because of relationship. The Lord said to me, don't eat this anymore. Eat this. And don't do this anymore. Do this. Did you notice when you do this, you feel better? When you notice when you do this, you don't feel better. It was a relationship where the Holy Spirit was saying, listen, you're not putting your money there anymore. You're going to put it here. You're not going to do this anymore. You're going to do this. And the relationship brought healing. Somebody help me here. I, Isaiah, I, Isaiah, quoting Isaiah, didn't bring the healing, even though it says there that by his stripes we're healed. And Peter quotes it. We all believe that. It is absolutely valid. It absolutely is the way. Okay, but... The Lord said, you're sabotaging yourself. Like he told us about our finances. I told Kathy, I said, the Lord's telling me it's what's going out. It's not what's coming in. We have plenty coming in. We didn't think so. But he said, you got plenty coming in. You, you got to stop the holes up. It's the money leaving. He said, the devil's stealing from you. And you know what happened? Consumer report came the next month, and it says if you do these six, th six things to your house, you will cut your electric bill in more than half, 60%. I said, oh, th six things. So I read it. I mean, I just had the Lord say this. It's what's going out. Well, we're here in Phoenix. My air conditioner for 18 years never shut off. <laughs> and by the end, it was like, meh. <laughs> Please, just one week vacation, it's in the contract. <laughs> you know? Okay, so what I did, I did those six things. Those six things, 
I would go to Home Depot and they'd call me by my first name. <laughs> they knew me. And I did those six things and it cut our bill in half. Well, it was a lot of money here. Cutting your bill in half is a lot. Okay, there was stuff leaving our house that should stay. It was cold air was leaving. Heat source to heat sink. It is just like a sucking sound like from Washington, you know, like Ross Perot said, there's a giant sucking sound, you know. There's like this, and that's what the devil wants to do. He wants to like, you know, you're, you're, paying, you're paying for something and you don't know that you can pay half. You don't know that you don't need that, you need this. You, you, you would save money. You would save money by obeying God. Have you had enough yet? Okay, so, so when the Spirit brings you into relationship, which has nothing to do with you going to heaven or not, relationship is when the power of ministry starts. The power of ministry is when you can say no to something and no one around you can. When you can say, no, we're not doing that. And they're like, how do you do that? And when you say, we're gonna do this, When I was at Southwest Airlines, I was putting in a lot of hours. But it was 50 or 60 hours a week. Now it's 110, 112, I keep track of my hours. You know, Mike put in 75 this last week. Okay, so I wanna go back to Southwest Airlines so I can rest. <laughs> what happened? What happened was relationship took me to at least double in, in productivity. Without the pain of work, without the effects of working, I doubled at least. And the, the one book that I couldn't write produced 70 or 80 books in just five or six years. Amen. That is what God has for you. So you gotta separate yourselves from the entities that are affecting you, that have been assigned to you to try to fragment you, to try to get a trigger event to happen. What God is looking for and what people in the world are looking for is, is people that can do impossible things. Whenever you've done everything to stand, it doesn't say when you've done everything to fight. It says when you've done everything to stand, stand. It doesn't sound like work to me. But it is work if that is the war. If standing is the war, then the vocabulary has changed, hasn't it? And that's what we're, and that's what we're dealing with now. We took a stand for righteousness and we're suffering for it. I keep talking because I hear devils screaming, shut up. I do, I hear devils saying, don't, don't tell them anymore. I do, I do, I hear, I, I don't always hear that. I don't, I don't talk to him, but he, he, he sometimes is flipping out. Phoenix, Phoenix is like a favorite place of the devil and I don't know why. It is, it is tough here spiritually. I was here for 28 years. I poked out the devil's tires on the way out of town. Amen. Okay, so you, for you to be here, for you to be operating here is a gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Because there is such a psychological warfare going on. There's such a grinding and a, 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 uh, it's so aggressive in the spirit here with Satan that it, it must be a hub. It has to be some kind of end time. I was told it was some kind of end time scenario thing that the devil has planned. And I started to see the manifestation and, the, and you've seen what's happened in the last four years. In, in a lot of states, you didn't even realize what was really going on, but it started to manifest and you started to see it. So every one of you, I'm telling you by the spirit of God, you need to take a stand for what Jesus has taught us 
what he has, what he, who he is as the Messiah and what he taught. And you need to embrace that. And you have been given the power, the authority to be sons of God, which means you don't have to spend three hours talking to the devil. You don't have to spit in a bucket. I mean, if it, that happens, you know, I'm sorry. Because I understand that certain things happen. But God's perfect will is that the devil must go. I don't focus on the theatrics of how he goes. I just want to make sure the seat's empty when, he, when it's done and that you are free. I don't, it doesn't matter what you believe. If a devil has you, then we need to drive him out. It doesn't matter what you say you believe because what's happening in your life is speaking louder than that and we need to come to that conclusion really quick. So I will end this, we'll, we'll go start tomorrow, but I want you to walk in the authority, not the, not, not, you know, there's two words for authority. And we, we focus on the dunamis. But there is another w- Greek word. Zosia is authority, which means that you can be 130 pounds, but have a badge. And if you're known, you're not going to mess with somebody. So there, it used to be that authority was not size. Authority was who, re- who you represent and you represent them, an ambassador. The police have a badge because they're, they're enforcing what has been established for that certain territory and that boundary. And they represent that. So when you run into them, you run into the law. If you're not breaking the law, you just, run in, you just say hi. And you just say, what do you need? And you sleep at night. Same with the IRS. You just pay your taxes and you, you just, oh, the IRS wrote me today. What, oh, hey, how you doing? What's up? So in other words, you have to get in, in where you walk in this and you're feared, but you don't fear. So now in our, we're all one in the spirit. You can feel it in this room. Okay, so all of us agree that not only are we delivered by the blood in the name of Jesus tonight, but that Satan must go in the territory that you're signed to. Does everybody agree to that? Because that is how Jesus has established it. So all of you, it doesn't matter about your past. It doesn't matter whether you went to hell and came back or heaven and came back or you're a warlock or a witch or a, a sandwich. It doesn't matter what you were. <laughs> It doesn't matter. The authority that you've been given is not based on your experience in hell or as a witch or whatever. Your, your authority was given as, as a, something that Jesus did and everybody has the same authority. It's like you don't have to be an expert in sin to be able to mentor somebody. You know, and you don't have to have an experience in the world to have a testimony. The testimony that you should have is that my parents were godly people and they brought me up right. <laughs> that would be like the best testimony you could have, not like telling what the devil did to you. In order to, you know, like that's entertainment to me and I'm not belittling what everybody's gone through because we've all gone through stuff and you'd, you'd probably make me cry if you told me your stories and, and you could describe what you saw in hell and. I ain't going there, so I don't need to know. I don't understand the book of Revelation, so you don't see me doing any courses on it. But at least I'm smart enough to admit I don't know, rather than make you a 19 DVD set and it'll all be wrong next year, <laughs> like most people do. You ever notice that like, there's no like, reprisal, you know? You know, th- the world doesn't end. We just see another three-ring circus, you know? It's better than yesterday, not, you know, as far as you just see this display. At what point do we say, listen, we are sons, we've been given authority, and that is what changes everything. Okay? All right, so in this room, by the authority of Jesus Christ, I drive out every devil, every single devil, 
Um, there are, there's those who have them lodged in, in, because of your past, they're lodged. They, they have made residence in certain areas of trauma and that is because they partitioned you off and fragmented you and you have separated yourself from that but it's still there because the entity that actually caused that to happen, that traumatic event, um, that entity was assigned to you um, was had access to that and, and continues to keep that wound open because it knows it's losing control and it, it does not want you to hear what the gospel that you heard tonight. But this is a night of deliverance. And so these things that you feel that won't leave you, you feel yourself in, in a behavior pattern that's a trigger event and then it's, it's a cycle that you go through. That is broken in Jesus' name. However, the entity that caused the event to happen in the first place has to be driven out. It has to be forbidden. It has to be told. Now, come on now. That person was intertwined with an entity that did that to you. In Jesus' time, he used the church. He used the denomination of the day. Satan used the Pharisees. That's what Jesus said. He called them sons of the devil. Satan gets into authority to get to you because he can't get to you on his own. He has to trick you. So let's call it as it is. Let's just call it as it is and let's say it tonight. Okay. So take care of that. There's a lot of you that are, that are receiving healing. You have been receiving healing during the service and these symptoms are starting to subside. Now, the only thing is, is that if you're eating something you shouldn't be eating, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, you need to stop it. You need to find out what that is. If it's a medical condition that you feel like it's, it's starting to get better, then you need to reinforce that and you need to confirm it with a doctor. Not a witch doctor, but a, a doctor. Okay, you need to confirm that God is healing you, but you cannot allow what you're experiencing here in the area of healing to diminish. If you feel like you are, are being healed in this room because you're here, and then it starts to come back when you're not here, that should show you that the corporate anointing is stronger and that is, devil is not allowed to operate when you're in the meeting. It, does, it has nothing to do with me. I mean, it has something to do with me because I came. But see, you're supposed to learn these things tonight because you're supposed to do these things. When you show up, all, all the time, stuff leaves people and, and it, it, it goes away and then they call me, they say, it, they used to tell me it, it's coming back. I said, no, it's not because you're not gonna let it. It's like, well, can you pray for me again? I said, okay, I'll pray for you again. But there's gonna come a point where you have to intertwine with the spirit and receive truth and then receive that. Okay, so you're healed in the name of Jesus, period. That's it, okay? It's because of authority. It's not because you're good. It's not because you said it a hundred times, you went to faith school. It's because... God gave you the ability to become sons and daughters of God. He gave you the authority, okay, with your finances. Your finances are the way you are because of one person. And that person can be seen if you go to your bathroom and look in the mirror. Because you're ultimately responsible for your finances, period, okay? Now, I'm only saying that to wake you up, but, but the, this is what had to happen with me. I had to realize that no one's gonna help me. The clearing house is not coming to my house with a big check. I realized that everybody that promised me a million dollars is not gonna give it to me, and no one ever has, but I have, I have enough to get us out of debt as a country all the promises I've been given. Okay, so I had to realize that 
no one's gonna do this for me. It's gonna be me and God walking out of this. Okay, so I had to own it. I had to say, Lord, you know what? I, I see in Deuteronomy 28, it's a lot better than it is in my life. And that's old covenant. So it's gotta be better because it's based on blood. The new covenant's based on better promises with blood. So obviously the benefits of the new covenant, even in the area of finances, would have to be better, or we would want to revert back to Deuteronomy 28, which doesn't say anything about giving. I didn't know if you knew that. Did you know that offering is, offerings are not mentioned in Deuteronomy at all? As far as the enemy fleeing from you, seven ways coming at you, one, about you being the head and not the tail, what does it say is the only stipulation, and I'll give you a hint, it's in the New Testament in, in John 15. If you love me, you obey me. Right. I'm the Lord your God. If you'll believe and you'll, and you'll obey, then these things are gonna happen to you. If you don't obey, then these things are gonna happen to you. Where did finances get involved with it? I'm asking for a friend. His name's Jesus. Okay, so you're responsible because you've been given authority on this earth. So I'm telling you, the devil has your money. And if he's intertwined with evil people, then they have your money. Why are you all looking at me like that? Well, you know, remember what they said about Jesus? Not a man ever spoke like this. It's like, well, that's sad. Because you got the Pharisees or the guardians of the word of God, the, the law, they're supposed to be teaching people. Okay, so whatever you say, whatever we say in this room goes, period. Okay, so let's just go after your finances right now. Yes. Let's just do it, okay? So I believe that God has made you the head, not to tell. I believe that you're supposed to lend to many but not borrow from any. I believe I believe that many nations will fear you because God is with you. I believe that, that you are feared in hell. I believe that you are given authority to produce wealth. It says that. It says, I give you the ability to produce wealth. Is that just for Old Testament people? Okay, so why would God say, uh, I'm giving you the ability to be poor or you know, go lose some money today. <laughs> He's not like that, right? I mean, even as a heavenly father, I'm sorry this is taking too long, but I can't let you go until we correct this stuff. This is a pivotal point in this ministry tonight. This meeting right here is so pivotal because it's flipped, the balance is flipped to you. It's happening tonight, it's happening this weekend. Warrior Notes is becoming you. It's always been you, but now, it's becoming apparent that I can't go any further. I've done everything I'm supposed to do. Two hundred and ten courses, forty thousand of you students. You do the math. That's a big crop. That's a big harvest. So go forth and produce fruit. So in your finances, I agree. I agree. And I take accountability for our finances. I, I, I agree with you that you take accountability. God's not making you poor. It says that he's going to provide for you according to his riches and glory. He's going he's to provide for everything you need according to his riches and glory. His riches and glory. It's there, it's like right there already. It's in the account. It has to be transferred to you. Everything you need for life and godliness has been given to you. So in the name of Jesus, let the transfer begin. Let the transfer begin. Let it be supernatural, let it be. But take accountability, that's all God wants from you. Your body, what's, what good is it if you're prospering and, you, and you're sick all the time? You can't enjoy that. If you're sick all the time, um, you can't enjoy your, your prosperity. If you're prosperous and, and you're sick, you know, it, it's bad. But if you're, if you're well, but you're poor, I mean, what, what, this, it's, 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 see, we, we can't even do simple math. 
Satan wants you to believe all this bad stuff about God. God is not working against you. All right, so I take authority over that. I mean, do I need to prophesy over every one of you? Do I need to lay hands on every one of you for that? No, no, no. God said that if we embrace the teachings of Jesus and embrace, embrace him, he gave us the authority to be sons of God. There are so many in here who are receiving this word. So many in here, it's gonna be so different. It's gonna be so different for you. So the Spirit of the Lord says, you've made it. He, sa he said, you have qualified to go through the narrow door. He said, you have, you have won. You have won me over, says the Lord, but you have won against yourself. You have won because you were tenacious and you carried it through, says the Lord. And because of that, I will help you even in a greater way from now on because I can trust you. You have shown me that you've been faithful. You have not backed off. You have not stopped believing. Life shall come into your body. Life shall come into your mind. Life shall come into your finances. The devil must go in my name. The devil must go, says the Lord. Oh my God. The Lord says, bow before me. Bow before me in my presence. I am a, I am a holy God. Worship me only, says the Lord. The blood of Jesus is enough. That covenant is enough to finish your race. Everything I have provided for you is already earmarked. It's already ready to go. Just receive from the hand of a loving heavenly father who cares about you more than you care about yourself. I will not let the enemy slander you any longer. I will not allow you to suffer in silence any longer. Everything that has been hidden shall be revealed and righteousness and justice shall come swiftly if you will adopt and accept everything that I have said. Everything that I have already done for you, if you accept it, it shall manifest quickly. I am not delaying any longer. Listen, man, there is a lot of you, you've been brought to this point tonight. You thought it was over, you, you're done. Well, welcome to my world. I feel that way every day. I go further than I think I can go. It's just a surprise that I wake up every morning. It really is. Because I give everything I have every day because I might not have another day. I know how this works down here. I'm telling you, there's so many of you, you have no idea how close you are to your breakthrough. You gotta stay alive. That's what the Lord's telling me. He's telling me this year, tell people, do everything they can to just stay alive, stay healthy, stay in a right mind, and don't give up. Because the sword is sharp that's in the hands of Jesus. That sword is so sharp. One swing, man, and your enemies are gonna stop talking. Amen. One swing. I'm telling you, it's one swing away. Man. You guys got to quit, quit pulling on me. I need to go. You, you, you are, a, this is, I'm telling you, you're, you're cut from your father's heart. You're part of the father. Amen. Becca, where's Becca? Did she, is she here? Did she go home? thought you went to the airport. Okay, come up here. You're supposed to just share. The Lord had Becca give up law school to, to come work for Warrior Notes, and as soon as she accepted, I said, go to law school and we'll send you. I said, you obeyed. And they gave her a scholarship. So she, she, she scholarshiped. But I was willing to do what I was supposed to do. She was willing to do what she was supposed to do. And I, 
this, this woman speaks from the Spirit of God. You gotta, go ahead, just, just share. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was actually in Phoenix that I kind of laid my life on the line because I always knew what I wanted to do, but I hadn't really fully given it over. And so I sat in a room right over there and I told Kevin that I'm gonna cry if I say this, but I just feel like I'm supposed to be with Warrior Notes. And I worked my entire life to get into law school. I'd already gotten in and I was devastated. And I thought that everything that I worked for was pointless. And Kevin said, it's gonna come back to you like a boomerang. And I was like, I trust you and I trust God. So I'm gonna go for it. And I emailed them, I said, I'm not coming. Um, if you send my offer, you know, here it goes. And so I looked into like online programs. I'm like, what am I gonna do? And I think like six months later, he was like, it's time. And I was like, it is time. <laughs> and I emailed them, I'm like, I'm coming back. And God has just been so good, y'all. Like, anything that you have given up, it's coming back to you. Any childhood dream that you had within your heart, it is not over. Seriously, y'all. For me, it was six months. Maybe y'all have putting something to the side for 40 years, please don't give up. Our graduates that are here, please don't give up. If you felt like you were supposed to do something when you were younger, try it, do it. Every single day I sit in class, I think it's impossible. It is the hardest thing that I have ever done. And every day I have the grace for it because I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. And every day I think that I'm going to fail and I know that I'm not because it is my destiny. So even if you don't feel capable, God is with inside of you. And that's what I tell myself every day. It's not me because I am nothing. I am nothing on my own, but the Holy Spirit comes inside of us and empowers us to be able to do what you never thought that you could do. All of you guys sitting here this weekend, I have been so blessed of single moms telling me their stories of how they never thought they could have an education. That could be any of y'all in here, anybody watching. Please, please, please don't sell yourself short because the Lord is not selling you short. He is not selling you short. The dreams that are within your heart will come to pass and we declare that over everyone here and everyone watching that every dream you had with inside your heart as a child in your dreams things that you thought were impossible will come to pass as you lay your life on the altar and say God it's not me it has to be through you amen so this was my dream this is my oldest daughter, and I wrote this on Facebook today. If you ask me anything I ever wanted in my entire life, it was for my kids to serve God. And all my children are serving God. Praise God. And I want to encourage you tonight. When your kids are small, when you're fighting for your kids, when you're fighting for your family, don't ever give up. The main thing is, is you have to see what's written in their books, not where they're at at the moment. When Jesus saw people, he wasn't looking at where they were. He was looking what he hand wrote about them before the world began. So I want you to be encouraged today that the prayers you moms and dads are praying, you grandmas are praying, you get in there and you fight you fight for your children. You fight for your grandchildren. And I want to tell you something. Get them enrolled in Warrior Notes. My 13-year-old just what became old enough to start Warrior Notes School of Ministry. And I am already seeing a change in her life. You have to understand, Mike and I were in ministry for probably 18 years before we got connected with Warrior Notes, and, I, and I've been absolutely changed. I've graduated with my bachelor's, and I said I wouldn't have wanted to hear myself speak before I 
heard all of this because it has so revolutionized my life. Everything I knew in my head just became part of my life. So I want to just encourage you students, keep going, keep studying, keep praying, and keep fighting. It's all worth it. Glory to God. Wasn't that rich this evening? Wow. The life of God is so working on the inside of you. There's a word in the Greek, it calls it zoe life. Zoe life is eternal life, but it's not the word eternal like we think of it. Eternal life is, is you know, when the way we think of it in the terms, eternal life is, you know, non it just keeps going and going and going, going, going. The truth of the word of zoe is this. It is the quality of life. It's better translated the God kind of life. And what was imparted to you tonight by the word of God was the life of God itself going into your spirit. You know, so many times we can't see what the spirit of God is doing. We have to take it by faith. But I'm going to give you a little story. This was a minister. If I named the minister to you, you'd know who it is, a very big name minister. And his wife was ministering at our church. And she said they were overseas and they were ministering actually in a, in a, a conference in Switzerland. And she said there was a lot of pastors there and a lot of ministers. And he said, uh, she said, the, the pastor, the minister was trying to get them to act in the joy of the Lord, because the presence of the Lord was so strong. And there was laughter, and there was a few things, but the presence, the sweetness of joy was acting. And she said, just act on the word. The word came tonight that said, laugh. And she said, there were ministers, come on, there were preachers on the front row, and they were kind of going, <laughs> <laughs> Looking around, you know, because you have to look dignified. And she said, a couple of them began to really laugh. And she said, the Lord pulled back the curtain on her eyes. And she said, there was a force. It was like a mist that was proceeding from their mouth. And it was going into the spirit. And it was causing a change in the atmosphere. See, we can't see those things. You've heard Dr. Kevin talking about the realms. There's so many realms and that we can't understand. We, we operate in this earthly realm, and so many times we think, this is it. You know, so many Christians, when you tell them, learn, you need to learn how to be led by the Spirit. I've had family tell me this. What in the world is that? What do you mean by led by the Spirit? The Bible tells us to be led by the Spirit. How many Christians don't know what that means? I'm telling you, there's millions of them. And we don't understand that realm of the Spirit. And I mean, laugh, it's a little, it's kind of silly. It makes you feel a little undignified. <laughs> but there was a release of the spirit that was going into a realm that we cannot see with these physical eyes but I'm telling you you can feel it in your heart and tonight Dr. Kevin was releasing the life the zoe life of the word of God into us and it was for one purpose, it's to change your world and your world around you. You carry that seed. You carry that anointing. We have much to do, church. Tonight, for all you graduates, you got something beautiful and holy. But it was the work that took you there. It's the storms that you press through. It's the ridicule that you faced from family and friends, even spouses. Some of you did. I heard you. 
But I'm here to tell you, you won. You got it. You won the victory. You take that victory that you got tonight, and you, you go and you change your world around you. That's God's call on your life. Hallelujah. Well, that is powerful. I'll tell you what, I'm ready to run through that wall over there. I'm so inspired. I just want to say, um, you guys, you guys inspire me, seriously. To see you guys around here just going after God and to know what you've been through, uh, the hard work, like, right, the studying, the classes. I, you know, I'm like, you know, I got to get back in the books because I need to get some more degrees myself. Um, but listen, I just want to uh, invite you tomorrow morning at 830, okay? We are going to package up the food. I know it's getting late. And let's stand real quick. How many want to stand, take a stand and tell the devil you're done in my life? Amen. Amen. How many are ready to take a stand and say, devil, you are done at my workplace? How many are ready to take a stand, put a, put a line in the sand and say, devil, you're done. If you cross this line, you are done. How many are ready to do that? Man, I feel the fire of God. I want to tell you, I heard it as soon as Mike pointed at me and said, you're coming. I was like, okay, Lord, you got to give me something. But I heard in the spirit, it's time, and I've said this before, but it's time to take the land in Jesus' name. What the reason you're here, listen, listen. Remember, remember when Mordecai told Esther, she's like, I don't, I don't want to give up. And Mordecai told Esther, God has raised you up for such a time as this. This is your Esther moment. God has raised you up for such a time as this. You might have thought, man, I should have got my degree 10 years ago. No, 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 friend. God has raised you up for such a time as this. And you at home, this is for you as well. Just because you're not here, you're included in this as well. So let's lift our hands right now. Whew. Lord, I thank you for the fire. Woo! I thank you for the fire of God. Do you feel that? I feel the fire of God. It's like an... You have to know that God has plucked you from the, the sapphire floor and he is shooting you out wherever you go and he's going to use you. I want you to take that by faith right now in the name of Jesus. I want you to say this. Say, God, I give you my yes. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for everyone in this room right now. And Lord, I know that nothing just happens uh, by chance, Lord. But today is March 1st. So we are taking our marching orders right now. And we are going forth. And we are taking the land in the name of Jesus. We're taking back our family in the name of Jesus. We are taking back the government in the name of Jesus. The schoolhouses in the name of Jesus. Woo! Everywhere you put your foot, you're going to take the land in the name of Jesus. And listen, when you step in, you got to own it. You got to take it. When you walk to your workplace, you're right. You walk in, you say, this is Jesus' place. This is God's house. Amen? All right, I can keep going. I just feel Kevin got all stirred up up here. I love you guys, and do not miss Coffee Talk. I'm telling you, it's going to be powerful. God bless you guys.